When Esme first invited me to collaborate or be her consultant on this Making Paradise exhibition, I was, it was very, very exciting. Um, and I knew the room, I knew it was quite small in the heart of the Aga Khan Centre. And she was talking about a fountain. And then I came and then I was asking about the fountain. And then she revealed to me that we had no water. So that was um, a bit of a challenge. But um, she brought me round to it, and we've made a conceptual fountain, a poetic fountain, as she says. When I first conceived the idea for the exhibition, I wanted to create um, an exhibition that connected the gallery with the rest of the building. And the fact that we have these incredible floating gardens in the building, I felt that there was a real opportunity to celebrate that. Um, and increasingly it felt really important to do that because of the, the recent pandemic that we've all been experiencing and garden spaces being um, so much more important to us all. One of the main things that I wanted to achieve was to have um, a fountain in the gallery space that would be a kind of poetic translation of water and how water enables life and, and how water gives life. And I took a, a traditional design, mostly inspired by Moroccan fountains and, and from the Alhambra also. And we've, and it's been made beautifully by Shelley, the um, technician, and her colleagues. And we have these beautiful lines of water made from cut out paper floral, white floral strips made by this um, marvellous artist from Berlin called Claire. Borsch and um, I know how difficult it was to get these right because I tried to do them myself and we were sewing and putting the rods in and trying to get it to flow in the right best possible way and I have to say I wasn't very good at it but um, Essen the curator was marvellous and Shelley and I think it's worked rather well our poetic fountain and it's kind of white and pale blue as you see um, I'm surrounded by colour. Paradise is full of colour as well. It's full of flowers, it's full of fruit, it's full of trees, it's full of everything that we could possibly want. And um, I think it's, it's a great success. And I hope everyone else will, because there is everything. There is both Western and Eastern art here. There's contemporary art and there's traditional art. Um, uh, some of the artists are from the Prince's School of Traditional Art, where I teach. And then we have these more Western ones from the Royal Horticultural Society. And we have other contemporary artists who've done these embroidered, beautifully embroidered panels. And using dried flowers outside, Olga has done those. And a ceramic water piece, sort of sculptural piece here. And we have calligraphy as well by Soraya. So we have all three main elements of Islamic art here. And also this wonderful soundscape, of course, because we have no windows here, so we have no birds. And of course, we have the beautiful scent made by somebody who works in this building, Alessandro, who specializes in making his own scent. We invited Tom Stewart Smith to come and open the exhibition with Emma Clark, um, really because he has a fantastic relationship with AKC and uh, AKDN. Given the beautiful garden that is about to emerge, uh, Jellico Gardens opens later this year to the public. Um, and like the exhibition, uh, we hope that it's going to draw in a really broad community to come and engage in everything that it has to offer. I was commissioned about five years ago now, jointly by AKDN and by Argent, who are the developers of King's Cross, to design this garden which we now see coming into reality below us here on the right. I think that one of the very interesting things for me as a designer working 
uh, working with AKDN has been to persuade people, obviously not people with AKDN, that the, 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 the idea of the Paradise Garden, and this is specifically a Paradise Garden inspired by Iran, so um, to persuade people that this is not something which is a foreign design trope. Um, it's something which is absolutely part of our European cultural identities. It's been very interesting for me to, to do a garden which brings these two traditions together. The planting is not as you'd expect it to see in a, in a Persian garden. It's probably much more like um, a traditional English garden in a way that it has you know, a lot of grasses, quite a contemporary idea, a lot of colourful planting. The trees are ones you might find in Persia. Um, so I think that people coming to see this garden will um, won't look at it and think this is something I don't understand, this is something foreign and exotic. But conversely, um, people who are familiar with Paradise Gardens and, and, and Gardens of Islam, I think will instantly recognise what it means. So Jellico Gardens is this wonderful mix of Eastern and Western cultures. So that lovely marriage of the East and the West. Uh, so for the exhibition, I very much had that idea uh, in the kind of forefront of my thinking um, and very specifically uh, chose artists and artwork that was from the East and the West. Um, and that kind of relates to really this idea of wanting to invite different communities to Aga Khan Centre and, and the gallery uh, so that people of all cultures, cultural backgrounds, uh, can come and enjoy the building, uh, this exhibition, and, and the gardens that we have to offer. I think it's lovely the, the different representations of flowers on the show. I mean, actually, even this, even this is it a ceramic piece here? It's yes. It's almost like a flower, even though it's an extremely geometric one. And then you've got you know, some of the, the, the other geometric patterns next to it, which are quite flower-like. Mm. Then we've got the, the real flowers, the dried flowers outside. <laughs> And as you say, there is this juxtaposition between traditions. There are some very good um, pieces from the Aga Khan collection. And the one you referred to upstairs, which is this mogul one, mm. with the, um, all the different gardens. And then we have these contemporary Ottoman plates, contemporary embroidery, which also Ottoman-type embroidery inspired by. Um, and then, of course, the RHS, the Royal Horticultural Society, have lent some lovely um, f uh, botanical paintings, flowers and fruit, because we wanted to mm. bring in the importance of fruit in the Islamic garden. And then these are by former students, actually. This is um, the ones that you were looking at before, carpet designs. Yeah, I have a new form, yeah. No, I think in this contrast with the colour and the white in the middle, it seems to work very well. And as you were saying, you know, what does it give to people? The exhibition is titled Making Paradise. The word paradise fills us with joy. It's a concept that is inspiring, uplifting. Um, I would like people to be delighted and enthralled by the many ideas conveyed in the exhibition. It's a multi-sensory exhibition with a bespoke perfume and a soundscape of birdsong based on imaginings of paradise. It has a richly diverse palette of artworks uh, from both the East and the West uh, by many incredible artists from across the world. Its layout is unconventional. There is a, um, a play of symmetry um, and a mix of both contemporary and historical work. So by including works from the Aga Khan Museum, the Royal Horticultural Society, the Royal School of Needlework and Prince's School of Traditional Arts. Uh, we hope that it will draw in a diverse audience that will come to the Aga Khan Centre and learn more about the amazing work of the Aga Khan Development Network around the world and the three institutes based here at AKC. I would like Aga Khan Centre, its gallery and its gardens to be a cultural destination in the City of London and hope that people will come back and engage with more of what we have to offer. The exhibition has a key message around pluralism by His Highness the Aga Khan, a message that welcomes different communities to come together and uh, explores how gardens play a key role in this ambition. 
And finally, I would like people to learn more about the wonderfully uplifting narrative around paradise in the Quran. Messages that are universal and there for all mankind, no matter what your faith or background. In these difficult times, we are all too aware of how important the natural world is to us. And gardens are spaces that are accessible and they're important because they enable our mental, physical and emotional well-being. So one of the key things that I would like people to take away from this is um, the idea to contemplate what does paradise mean to you as an individual.